All right. So welcome all of you. Um, today's discussion was centered on correlated t-test. So correlated t-test is also known as dependent t-test or sometimes referred to as t-test for matched samples. Meaning that when it comes to correlated t, we have three names and any of any of the any of them means the same thing. So um, last weekend we discussed what independent t-test is all about. And we emphasize that with independent t-test, we have two samples, all right, but these two samples, they are what? They are unrelated. And in most, in some situations or in some instances, you will get two samples, but this time around, certain clues or indicators will be given to you for you to know that the two samples are what are related, meaning they depend on each other. When that happens, it means you can't use independent t-test to analyze your data. You are supposed to go in for correlated t-test, also known as dependent t-test or t-test for match samples. So let's take a practical example. Or before that, you should know that in this course, for you to know that, okay, the two samples are related or dependent on each other, it depends on three main scenarios. So in this course, any of these scenarios could what could pop up examination and when you see those instances or scenarios it should give you a clue that you are supposed to use dependent t-test so i'm repeat with the dependent t-test three situations or instances will inform you to know that you are supposed to analyze the data using dependent t-test or correlated t-test and in most situations with nation format, for you to use correlated T, any of these three scenarios could be to you. So as to inform you that, hey, you're supposed to use correlated T or dependency test. So I'll walk you through the three scenarios. So the first scenario is match samples. Okay, so I've given you some little um, description or explanation when it comes to match samples. So it means in match samples, there's two samples that we've, what we've, we've um, drawn. They are equivalent in what? In every aspect, with the exception of the independent variable that we are manipulating. As in our cases, Let's say you want to conduct a, a study to find out. Sir, please, your track is not stable and it's making it difficult for me to hear. All right. All right. Is it clear now? Is it much better now? Is it much better now? I need a response before I go ahead. The person who indicated the network is not clear. Okay, so let me go ahead. So the thing is, I was saying with match samples, it means we, you have samples and these two samples, they are- Sir Kenneth. Yes. Please, the network. Yes, that was why I, I asked. Is it okay? Nobody, nobody. In no, 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 sorry, so, that it, no, it didn't come it through. Didn't yeah. Interesting. Mm -hmm. So, is it clear now? It is for now. 
Oh, going forward, we don't see much. All right. So uh, what I'm so what I was saying was that with correlated T, the two samples that we have, okay, they are dependent on each other or they are related. So um, in this course, for you to use correlated T. Okay, yeah. I hear you, please. I hear you. So for you to use correlated T, there are three indicators that will inform you as to whether to use correlated T. So the first one is matched samples, match samples. So it means with match samples, you have two samples, all right, but they have certain characteristics or common characteristics that would guide you to know that they Although they've been what they've been taken from different populations, they have common characteristics that should inform you that you're supposed to use correlated T. So a typical example is let's say you want to conduct a study to find out examination anxiety of students. So you sampled from University of Ghana and Methodist University, meaning you selected five students from University of Ghana and five students from Methodist University, and you want to compare the two groups. You can see that on face value, when you see this, you might be in here to conclude that you're supposed to use independent t-tests because they are from what? different groups. So although they are from different groups, with for you to use correlated T when it comes to this scenario, within the question, they should give you certain in characteristics. So when you check the first table, we have University of Ghana, Methodist University. Within it, we have common characteristics. So you can see student one, the researchers made sure that the person was male, level 100, and 17 years. When they get to Methodist University, they also made sure that they selected um, student one who also had similar characteristics, like student one from University of Ghana, and it goes on from one to five. So you can check it very well. And you can see that they make sure that if they pick a, a characteristic in the University of Ghana for one participant, they ensure they pick the same characteristic for this for the other participants in Methodist University. So when it happens like that, then it tells you that oh, although we sample them from different universities. The participant, to a large extent, do have what common characteristics. So it means participant one from UG has same characteristic like participant from participant one from University of Ghana. The same thing for participant two, three, four, five for both universities. So hence due to the participants having common characteristics, you can't um, immediately conclude that you're supposed to use independent t-test, nope. So long as they have these common characteristics, it means you're supposed to, to a large extent, go in for independent t because the participants in the two samples are what? Are related. So that's how you are to, you generate dependent or correlated teachers. So this is one, one of the scenarios which could come up for you to know that you're supposed to use correlated teachers. Okay. 
The next one has to do with the fact that within the question or within the study that they are doing, it should center on identical twins. Identical twins, not any other twin, but identical twin. So for you to use correlated T, make sure that within the quest question, they have specified that they use identical twins or monozygotic twins. But the moment within the question, they indicate, oh, they use twins. Twins could be either identical or fraternal. So for you to use correlated C, it should be identical twins, meaning that we assume that with identical twins, the twins do share what? Common phenotypes and genotypes. So out of this, we normally go in for what for identical twins because they share common characteristics. Okay, then the last scenario that can inform you that you're supposed to use correlated T has to do with what we normally call repeated, repeated measures design. Repeated measures design. And I think you came across this during experimental psychology. So you could see maybe they were trying to um, conduct maybe an intervention plan to help people who have maybe anger, anger, anger issues. So first, they tested their anger management. Sorry, they, they tested their aggression level. Then that, that was for the intervention plan. Then afterwards, they introduced an intervention, like helping them to manage their anger. After taking them through maybe five weeks intervention, the researchers then tested their anger again or their aggression levels again to find out whether there has been some changes. So we normally call this before and after intervention or yes, before and after studies because they first test them for the first time then in another, another occasion, they test the same participant. So when you see in the question that they've indicated before and after, don't be in haste to conclude that you're supposed to use dependency or correlated T. Find out whether, find out within the question whether the same participant went through the before and the after. It's really, it's really, really essential. When you read a question, find out and, and see for, 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 for certain that the same participant or subject went through the before and after. But in an instance whereby the researchers select some groups, some group of participants, for the before, then the after, they also sample another participant. It means that you can't use correlated T because they are two different what groups, meaning you're supposed to use independent T test. But for you to use correlated, the same participant should go through the before and after so that we can say, oh, the scores that we got for the two intervention no the two the two tests is for the same what participant hence the scores are what related okay so these are the three key instances you can use correlated t so please in case any of you have a question for what i've indicated so far please this is the opportune moment for you to go ahead so you can use the emoji to raise up your hand. I'll call you so that you can what? You can elaborate. So please, if you have a question, use the emoji to raise up your hand.
All right, so I assume that you've all understood what I earlier indicated. So meaning I'm going ahead or I'm moving on. So let's try and solve a question. So this question that we are solving centers on identical twins. But in essence, they can break any of the three scenarios I just, what I just indicated. So I'm reading. To determine the influence of early childhood social environment on emotional adjustment at adolescence, 16 sets of identical twins orphaned during infancy was obtained. For each pair, one member was placed in a foster home while the other member grew up with relations of their natural parents. At age 18, all twins were administered a self-report inventory that measured degree of emotional adjustment. So with a degree of emotional adjustment, scores could range between 10 and 80 with higher scores reflecting better adjustment. Then a question, did the type of early childhood social environment have any influence on the emotional adjustment of the twins at adolescence? Then you're saying, is there a significant difference in performance between males and females in Oh, sorry, sorry. So this is not part. So you mean, the question is, did the type of early childhood social environment have any influence on emotional adjustment of twins at adolescence? And that's the table we are supposed to use to calculate. So like what we did for independent t-test, you could see that beneath it, they've indicated show full working steps. It means we are supposed to use the six steps to solve this. And as I indicated with the six steps, you are taxed to know what each step is expected of you. So the first step that we need to do is what is step one. And st step one has to do with what? So please, can someone tell me step one, what we are supposed to do, what is expected of us to do under step one, and what it is all about? Choice of statistics. Eh? And what are we supposed to do when it comes to choice of statistical test? We are supposed to uh, look out for the assumptions in the question. Yeah. Good, good. So it means within a question, we are supposed to identify certain assumptions that informs why we are using correlated T or dependent T test or T test for match samples. It means the same thing. So first, we've been able to deduce that they were using identical twins. And identical twins false on part of what of the three instances I earlier indicated. So although each member was placed in what in different environment, so long as they are identical, we assume that they are what they have unique, sorry, they have similar characteristics. Hence, we are supposed to use correlated T. So with correlated T, these are the main assumptions underlining correlated T. So the first assumption has to do with the fact that the two set of scores are related with each other because of the fact that we're able to identify that they are identical twins. Hence, we assume that there's two scores. are related with each other. 
So since the two scores are related with each other, we then have to reduce the scores of the two populations into a single population of different scores. We call it D scores. So D scores has to do with refining the difference between the two scores. So we are saying since the two set of scores, thus this and that, they are the same, then it means that we need to find another column just to find the difference of the two scores so that we can, we can get a single what score for these 12 twins. Okay, so that's what the second assumption is all about. Okay, then the third assumption has to do with the fact that the thing that they were measuring and what were they measuring? You can see that they were measuring emotional adjustment because that was what they indicated. So emotional adjustment is a psychological construct, meaning it is on interval. And I've been repeating this. If you are not confident or you are not all that sure as to whether what they were measuring is interval or ratio, in order to be on the safer side, you can make it, they were measured on at least interval, meaning you are telling your reader that it could be either ratio or interval. You remark correct. But the moment you are emphatic, instead of you indicating interval and you indicate they were measured on ratio, it means you are wrong. So that's why it's much safer if you indicate at least interval. All right. Then the last assumption has to do with the fact that since they are measured on interval, then we assume that it is a parametric test. And you know, any parametric test, we are supposed to transform it into a normal curve distribution. And Dr. Arno took you through this. Every parametric test, you are supposed to transform it into a normal curve distribution like this. So it means we have to transform the different scores into a normal curve distribution. That will be for the fourth assumptions. So these are the, the basic assumptions underlining correlated T. Okay, so anytime you get to know that, okay, the test that you're supposed to use is correlated T, then it means you're supposed to state these four assumptions. All right. Then the next step that you are supposed to do is statement of hypothesis. So I want someone to, uh, to go through the question and tell me the, the hypothesis that we are supposed to do, the null and the alternative hypothesis. From the question, what do you think would be the null and the alternative hypothesis? So please, if you have a clue, please use the emoji to raise up your hand. Oh, because they've made a prediction in the question. So what kind of prediction have they made? Hello? Yes, sir. Hi, uh, sir, we are here. Yeah, nobody is responding. We are reading through the question. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, Jamila. Um, 
the alternative hypotenuse will read as the type of early childhood social environment. Okay. Will have a significant influence on the emotional adjustments of twins of adolescents often. Thank you, Jamila. Yeah. So that will be for H1, the alternative hypothesis, which is directly stated in the question, which is directly stated in the question. So that's the prediction they've made because they are, comp they are trying to find out how social environment influences emotional adjustment. And with this type of hypothesis, I last week I indicated when you are able to identify the alternative hypothesis, ask yourself, is it directional or non-directional? Directional or non-directional is the same as me saying, is it one-tailed or two-tailed hypothesis? So please, my question to the class. There is a non-directional hypothesis. Good. Because you could see that they didn't, they were not what really specific as to whether social environment will have um, a positive or a negative influence. So they just said there will be an influence, meaning it is non-directional. And one thing about hypothesis is that you are making a prediction. So when you are putting it in a statement form, make sure that you put it in future tense. It means your H1 will be type of early childhood social environment will have a significant influence on emotional adjustment of adolescents. Emotional adjustment of twins at adolescence. Okay. Then what of the null hypothesis? What would be the null hypothesis? The vice versa of the alternative hypothesis. So what would be the, vi the vice versa of, of, of the alternative? The, the type of early childhood social environment will not have influence on the emotional adjustment of the twins. Thank you, Patrick. Exactly, exactly. All right. As I've been stating always with statement of hypothesis, you are supposed to indicate it in a statement form and represent them with symbols. So with alternative hypothesis, this is how you're supposed to represent it. We use the mu, that's the population mean. Then d means difference. So mu d is not equal to zero. Then with this would be mu d is equal to zero. We use the equal signs because of the fact that it, it was non-directional. But in situations whereby within the question, they were able to indicate that, oh, type of early childhood has a positive influence. They indicated here positive. Then it means they've indicated the direction they want. Hence, it means this time around, it will be mu d is what? Greater than zero because it is directional or had they indicated negative influence then it means the null hypothesis will be mu d is less than zero okay then the null hypothesis will be the other way around like what we did for independent t-test all right so please, any questions so far? Any questions so far when it comes to step one and step two? Oh, okay. Then I can go ahead. So please, Zoom alerted me about seven minutes ago. So I'm not using the premium. 
So it means um, we have about, we have less than three minutes in case a cat can you use the same Zoom details to join? All right. So the next one has to do with the decision rule. The decision rule. So like what we did for independent t test, I told you with the decision rule, you are supposed to get a critical value. A critical value. And for you to derive your critical value, for you to derive your critical value, you have to use three key things. That's whether the hypothesis is directional or non-directional. And the level of significance and degree of freedom. And the degree of freedom for correlated T is N minus one. And as I indicated, when we're doing independent tests, with a degree of freedom, it will not be given to you, or it will not be part of the formula book. So it means you also, it is your duty to know the degree, the formula for the degree of freedom for every test. So DF has got N minus one, where N is the total number of people. And in this, I think the twins, they were how many? Um, 16. They were 16. Okay. They were 16 in number. So it means it will be 16 minus one, which is equal to 15. So it means our degree of freedom is 15. All right. So since we have this, please I have less than a minute when a cat use the same link. So when it happens, we can then use our table to generate uh, information. We can use our table to generate the information that we want.